Hey everyone, I'm Kai from ML Sound Lab, and today I'm going to run through my complete guide to the Miko 2 plugin. The Miko 2 plugin is a cabinet simulator and IR creation plugin that allows you to blend up to nine microphones together and move them around cabinets in a 3D space. Near endless combinations and possibilities can be daunting, intimidating, and scary, but I'm here to make them all make sense. Before anything else, it's important to ensure that Miko 2 has been set up and installed on your system. We did post a video on this, so if you're struggling with it, there's a link in the description box below. So now I've got everything set up. I've got my Sully Guitars Baritone Alita into the free Amped Roots 5034 model with the cabinet section disabled, and I'm coming out of that into Miko 2. When you boot up Miko 2 for the first time, you'll be presented with this UI. On the left hand side of the screen you've got the main speaker view. This is where you can move the microphones around the cabinets in a 3D space. On the top right here you've got your presets, you've got exporting the IR and you've got your license manager. You've also got this EQ balance section as well as all of the controls for the microphones here. We're going to start with a single microphone to keep things simple. Hit the drop down for the speaker to choose your cabinet, I'm going to choose the Gen V30, and the drop down under the microphone chooses your mic. I'm going to choose the Dynamic 57. You can click and drag this microphone to move it around the cabinet. If you hold control while you click and drag, you can adjust both the tilt and the distance of the microphone. You'll notice these movement knobs in the bottom right hand corner are all changing as I change the mic position. You can use these to change the position of the microphone if that suits your needs better. Now did you notice that the EQ graph was jumping around as we adjusted the position of the microphone? This EQ graph shows the EQ of your IR in real time. If you move your microphone towards the edge of the speaker, you'll see the high end start to roll off and the low end start to increase. The reverse is also true. If you move your microphone towards the center of the speaker, the low end starts to decrease as the high end increases. You're also able to grab the bands labeled A to E and click and drag them to manipulate the EQ yourself. Using the scroll wheel on your mouse can adjust the width of these EQ bands. You can take it from an extremely narrow surgical EQ to a much wider EQ. Now we'll double click to reset this one for now. You've also got a high pass which cuts some of the low end from your tone. and a low pass which cuts the high end. Let's now find a position that we like for this 57 mic. So I'm pretty happy with how that one's sounding. Now that we've got the hang of using a single mic, let's add a second into the mix. The 57 sounds nice and aggressive, but it would be nice to add in another microphone that gives you a bit more of that low end bloom. You can use the plus button on the right hand side of the window to add a new microphone to your blend. I'm gonna use the free mega oversize cabinet for this and I'll use the 121 mic for that low end. You can double click the mic to solo it, or you can use the S button in the mix window. This will mean that you're only hearing that mic without the other mics in your blend interfering with your tone. Now we can double click it again or use this S button to unsolo it and hear it in tandem with the 57.
Now that's sounding pretty great, but I am noticing that the 121 is being favoured a little too heavily and it's making the low end flub out a little. We can adjust this using the mix slider. So let's pull the 121 back until we're happy with it. Now that we've got two microphones added, the phase and pan sections both come into play. The pan knob is super simple, you get to choose where in the stereo field you'd like that microphone to be placed. Sticking with the 57, let's hear what it sounds like all the way pan to the left. Now all the way to the right. We'll double click this one to reset it for now. Now the phase knob is something entirely new for Miko 2. This is an incredibly powerful tool that adjusts the latency between the two microphones to change the phase relationship. The other thing to mention while we're here is this phase reverse button. This flips the polarity of one of the microphones, so rather than hearing the two EQs of the microphones being added together, you're hearing the difference between them. This can be incredibly useful for dialing out some of the harsh highs and the flubby lows. Now before we add a third microphone into our blend, let's save our preset so that we've got a checkpoint to return to if we need to. Head up to the preset tab, select the drop down and then select save. Give your preset a name, I'm going to call mine Gent Preset. Select save and now if you make changes to your preset that you're not happy with, so say we move these microphones around and you wanted to return back to the preset you saved earlier, you could use this recall preset button. So we've now got the 57 for the high end aggression and the 121 for that low end power, but it would be nice to add a third microphone to flatten out the mids a little. Hit the plus button again and we'll add a new cabinet to our mix. This time we'll pick the Vault. I'm going to choose the 160 microphone on this one and again we'll double click it to solo it. Now let's find a position where we really like the mid-range. Now we'll double click it again to unsolo it and hear these three mics together. Now I'm noticing that the Volk cab is being favoured too heavily again, so we'll pull this one back a touch. Now we can mute this microphone by right clicking it or by hitting the M in the mix window. This will let us hear what the other two microphones sounded like before we introduce this 160. Now let's say we add another mic and we're not too happy with it. Let's go for the VX30 and let's go for the 7B on it. Say we don't like what this is doing to our sound. You can remove it by clicking any of the other microphones and then hitting the small X above the microphone you wish to remove. 
Finally, we'll tame some of this low end bump by using the EQ controls. We'll pull the high pass in a little and the low pass. Then we'll use the B control to pull this down. Now that we're happy with it, let's export using this export IR button in the top right hand corner. You'll be presented with these options. The sample rate and bit depth are going to depend on what device you're using them with. If you're using them with a digital modeler, your device's manual should tell you what you need to set these to. For the channels to export, this is only really relevant if you're using a stereo IR. You can export the left and right channels individually, or you can export them together as a stereo IR. The minimum phase transform box should only be checked if you're blending your IR as a dual cab block with other vendors' IRs or stock cabinets. Otherwise, you can leave this one unchecked. Now hit export IR and name it how you'd like. So that's everything I've got for this guide. Drop a comment in the comment section below if you're stuck with anything else and we'll happily help you out.